Turgensia Hell. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. I have got one here that I reviewed a while back and like the sap that I am, I deleted it. So I've got to review it all over again. But I do remember it being a really good beer. Now I remember I reviewed the Dunkel from them, which is on the channel if you want to have a look at that. That was really good. And I tried one of these not so long ago. I don't think I've put the review of, of it up yet, have I? I think it was the Pils. I don't think I've put it up yet. That was really good. Typical German Pilsner. Nice bitter finish with all the, or not spicy finish, not a bitter finish, a spicy finish with all the, the nice noble hops that are on there. And I was browsing Noble Green the other day and I picked one of these up. They had these for sale and they had it quite cheap. So I thought I'll give it a go. It was under three pounds, which ain't bad for a quality beer that I think is rather good from what I remember. This of course is the Hell, they call it Hell, Hellas, same thing. It's a lager basically. And um, it's, it's one of them ones where I do remember tasting it and thinking this could only have come from Bavaria. It's got all the characteristics of a really good hell. Now I was looking on, I think it was Beer Hawk, and they said this comes from the same brewery as Augustina. It doesn't. That is complete and utter crap. It's got, it comes from a brewery whose name I'm not going to pronounce, but this is what the brewery is called. Now it can trace its, its um, origins back to a monastery and the monastery was founded, so they say, in 1050. However, that's disputed. The real date is somewhere in the 1670s. Now, if it was 1050, then it would be one of the oldest brewers in Germany, but it, it's not. There's rumors that the monastery was there a long time before 1050 even, but it wasn't brewing beer until or 1670 and it was owned by the Wittelbach family who were Bavarian royalty now if you've watched my video about the wheat beer history of German wheat beer you'll have heard me mention that name the Wittelbach family they were the ones who had the sole rights to brew wheat beer in Bavaria and George Schneider hassled them and eventually got the right to brew wheat beer in his own brewery and of course Schneider Weiss was born and the rest is history but they were quite a powerful family royal family in Bavaria and you've got to remember Germany wasn't a country until the 1870s it was all independent states and they were unified in 18 I think it was 1870 under Bismarck but I'm not really up on the history of German unification, so you may need to correct me on that one, but I think I've got that right. I know Bismarck was around at the time of the Franco-Prussian War, which was, I think, the start of the First Reich or something. I don't, you know, I'm talking about history. Let's get on to the beer. Well, go on, eh? Go on! Have a go at it! Go on! This is a Bavarian Hell. They call it Hell, Hellas. Same thing, just means light or light beer. It's 4.8%. It's a 500 ml bottle. If you look at the, the blue checkered design on the front, that just says B. 
Bavaria. And that is the coat of arms of the House of Wittelbach, who were the, the big Bavarian royal family during the uh, 17 and 1800s. And I still think there's some connection there now. They're all over good German beer. And even on the uh, European protected status, that symbol is used. And of course, Bayern Munich, the football team, use it as well. So that is synonymous with Bavaria. Uh, I'm going to be drinking out of one of these. Now, this is a Pilsner glass. I managed to find this on eBay. It's an ABK, another Bavarian beer brewer. And this is a Pilsner glass. It's quite a popular style of Pilsner glass. And the reason I like it is because it's a pint. Now, it's so easy to get a, a litre stein and drink it out of there. But I don't like drinking out of litre steins for, for two reasons. One, if you pour a 500 ml bottle in there, it looks like it's a quarter full or half full. And two, if you do fill it up to the top, when you're drinking out of a stein, I find that by the time you get to the bottom, the beer's warmed up a hell of a lot and it doesn't stay that fresh. I think in one of these is just the right size. And of course, Kirsch, if you're familiar with the flavour, that's served in 25 centilitre glasses. And the reason for that is, is because they want to keep it as cool as possible, as fresh as possible. And, you know, it takes no time at all to drink 25 centilitres if you're a seasoned drinker. And of course, if you're filling it up all the time, you're just getting fresh beer, nice fresh cold beer all the time. Birds love it. Anyway, more on that later. Let's get this beer open and checked out. There is the cap. Turgensia. Turgensia hell. Walks against your beer. It, absolutely, it looks absolutely amazing. The, the actual place, it's a reason in Germany. It's, um, it's a resort and I'm looking it up online. I was looking, checking it out earlier and it looks absolutely amazing. And I'm seriously considering taking the missus over there for the honeymoon. She wants to go to Hawaii. I want to go to Germany. Why do you think I want to go to Germany? I think I'm going to win. <laughs> Not. Anyway, let's get it into the glass. Now, there's nothing on the brew sheet at all about this. It's really hard to find information, reliable information about this beer, but coming from Bavaria, I'm sure they've been using Hallertau hops in this, and it's gonna give you all of that lovely German noble hop flavor. Now, there it is in the glass. Fair bit of carbonation, one finger white head, tightly packed, white head on the nose. Oh, it smells lovely. It's a mixture of sweet, nutty, Bavarian, Munich malt, and a lovely bit of lemon citrus, and that spice, that black pepper spice that is synonymous with Hallertau hops. Some grassy notes there as well, herbal grassy notes. It just smells clean though, and you know, I don't know what it is. The combination of everything, just makes the water smell really clean. Now I know they do use soft water in all their beers, unlike British brewers who like to season their beers with, well, season the water with sulfur, high calcium and sulfur. And uh, of course that goes well for dark beers, but for lager, you cannot beat clear spring water as the Germans know all too well. There is in the glass, it looks lovely, golden color. Dirty rim around the top of that bloody dishwasher. Anyway, let's get it down the hatch. Zum Wohl, as they say in Germany. Yeah, this is lovely. This is exactly how I remember it. It's just that perfect mix. I must have said this a thousand times, but you get a nice mixture in the mouth of lovely doughy bread type malt. Nice lemon citrus that runs through there 
all the way through and of course on the arse end as it's going down you get that nice grassy and peppery note just before it finishes and then as it goes down then that all comes back that bready doughy almost biscuity type malt and it just makes it so refreshing it is full of flavour now the weather's cooled down a lot and you know the past few weeks I've been drinking a hell of a lot of German Pilsners not Helles just Pilsners and I've gotten quite a nice sort of appreciation of the differences between the two some people they find it difficult to differentiate between the Pilsner style and the Helles style but believe me there is a big difference with the Pilsner style it is all about the big spicy hoppy notes that are on there yeah you do get some malt coming through there but the finish on it is dry not bitter but spicy if you like the Helles style especially Bavarian Helles style it has got an element of that but it's it's more about the malt you do get that lovely biscuity bready doughy type malt it's like white bread you know if you crunch up white bread and just you know finish that then you get that nice yeasty bready type aroma and it's absolutely gorgeous That's really nice. You're getting quite a, an aggressive style carbonation in there. And <clears throat> I will say, out of all the beers, the Lervenbrau for me was just so smooth. It looked more carbonated in the glass than that, but it was so smooth. This doesn't look too carbonated at all, but it really does transfer into the mouth. Now, some people like that. Personally, I'd rather have it smoother. They say it pushes the flavour around. Yeah, there is some truth to that. It does. But I, I think you'd get just as much flavour with a, an ultra smooth mouthfeel. You certainly get the drinkability, in my opinion, anyway. And this is really good. This is really nice. Mmm. really good lovely lemon citrus on that as well typical of them Hallertauer hops and of course this conforms to the Reinheitsgebot I mean that, that should go without saying in Bavaria I don't think you can get away with brewing beer in Bavaria with not conforming to it they were the they were the originators from it and I think if memory serves me rightly the Wittelbach royal family were one of the ones who signed or drew up the original Reinheitsgebot, they were the original signatories of it and they enforced it across all the breweries in Bavaria so you know that is going to be a good one and it is I mean you just cannot go wrong with that that is a really nice Bavarian Hellas so what's the verdict on this well yeah it's it's just brilliant I do like the Bavarian beers. There's no secret there, and if, you know if you if you're a regular on the channel, you know that that's a big thing for me. It's one of my favourite styles of beer. But you know, German beer for me, you just cannot go wrong with. Uh, I will say, I have tasted better. I think the Paulana, the the Augustina, of course, and there have been some other little surprising. Hellas's that have come out of Germany that I think shadow this one I think this is good I mean I wouldn't say don't get it and it's it is really nice the Hofbrau now that was another one that's the one I was trying to think for me the Hofbrau is up there almost but not quite there with the Augustina and I remember I was on Twitter the other day and I was saying to somebody who worked at Northern Monk they bought some of this brought some of the Hof, Hofbrau and they bought another one as well. And I said, Hofbrau first, this second, blah, blah, blah. And they disagreed totally and said this was the best one, which is fair enough. I mean, 
you're talking the width of a Nats cock basically when it comes to comparing German helices they're all they all are really good I think mean, I think you have to be unlucky if you get a bad one from Bavaria certainly but I personally prefer the Hofbrau stuff but I think this girl from Northern Monk she was saying that the Hofbrau wasn't as good as this I disagree with that but it's different tastes and as I always say this is just personal taste this is not a definitive guide there is no it's like music nobody can state with any conviction that this beer is better than that beer unless of course you're talking about genuinely shit beer like Foster's and whatnot but again it's all subjective it's like as I say it's like music you know I could say to some fucking teeny bopper that you know Motorhead are better than I don't know who is it Little Mix and she could argue that they're better I could argue that Motorhead are better but nobody would win because it's all subjective it is not a competition it's about what you like at the end of the day and what I do is just try to give you my opinion that's all you're doing really is looking at my opinion and you know you respect people's opinions you don't respect other people's opinions so that's what it's all about basically or is that the hokey cokey I think the hokey cokey is what it's all about but anyway talking bollocks as usual I am going to give this a 7 out of 10 no I'm not I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10 and I'm definitely going to recommend it there's no two ways about it this is a fantastic beer but I do think there are some better ones out there the Hofbrau and Paulana I think definitely shade this and of course the Augustina stands above them all so there you go that is a 9 out of 10 but it's definitely recommended the Dunkel is really good too I really enjoyed that in fact I think I preferred it to this but I always prefer Dunkels, I prefer Dunkel Weiss beers, I prefer Dunkel beers, if you like, just because of that lovely caramel malt. But that's just me. And remember, beer is working class champagne.